So what is fatigue costing your business? Well, I want to start by just telling you a wee story. Just after midnight on March 24, 1989, the Exxon Valdez was laden with 53 million gallons of crude oil was sailing the dark icy waters off the southern coast of Alaska. The ship's captain, Joe Hazelwood, had drunk more than his share of vodka and had retired to his cabin. Filling in for the captain, third mate Gregory T. Cousins knew they were approaching Blight Reef but failed to notice that the tanker was on autopilot and thus not responding to his call for a change of course. As a result, the, the reef sliced through the hull, spilling a fifth of the toxic cargo into Prince William Sound, wiping out 250,000 seabirds, 2,800 sea otters, 300 harbour seals, 250 bald eagles, 22 killer whales and billions of salmon and herring fouling over a thousand miles of pristine coastline. So what does a 10 million gallon oil slick have to do with fatigue? Well the National Transportation Safety Board investigation attributed the accident to the fact that Cousins, who had been awake for 18 hours prior to taking the helm of the Valdez, failed to properly manoeuvre the vessel because of fatigue and excessive workload. Given what science can tell us about the disastrous effects of sleep deprivation on decision making, alertness and coordination, a case can be made that Cousins simply, had he simply lain down for a brief sleep, one of the greatest environmental catastrophes in recent memory and the 2.5 billion cost for cleanup might have been avoided. While the fate of the Exxon Valdez represents perhaps the most dramatic reason for introducing a fatigue risk management program, into our workplace, it's by far from the only one. The pace of life has accelerated to the point where all of us must ask, is there a Valdez waiting to happen in your business? While New Zealand employers are required, as per the Health and Safety Act, to take all practical steps to prevent harm from workplace hazards, including fatigue and the behaviour of fatigued workers, it appears that many businesses are at a loss, at loss as to where to start. The potential benefits for employers and employees are reduced absenteeism, better productivity, fewer accidents, improved staff morale, fewer incidents, reduced staff turnover and reduced insurance premiums. So do you really know how much fatigue impaired employees are costing your business? In today's 24-7 work environment, getting the most from your employees is paramount to being successful in an ever-expanding competitive global community. But there is a very fine line between pushing your employees to high production standards and pushing, to, pushing them to the point of burnout. Gone are the days when fatigue was only a concern for traditional round-the-clock industries like mining or transportation. While the immediate impact of worker fatigue in your workplace may not be as catastrophic as say the Chernobyl nuclear incident in which fatigue was a contributing factor, it can absolutely still have a major impact on your employees and your company and your bottom line. <coughs> Although fatigue can present itself as a symptom of other health concerns such as stress or depression, it can also be a standalone condition that adversely affects the health and productivity of employees. Effective fatigue, fatigue management systems should be considered essential in order to minimise associated risks and maximise safety, performance and health, thus reducing the cost burden. There are numerous studies in Australia, the UK and the US that have looked at the error rate of nurses and other medical professionals in patient care during overnight shifts in long call situations. The increase in error rate in relation to job time and or sleep deprivation is undeniable, showing that the measurable impairment in cognitive and physiological functions do actually have a carryover effect on job performance. In addition to poor job performance, the increased rates of motor vehicle accidents occurring um, to and from these particular working rotations are also higher. Job performance is compromised, risk of error, accident or injury while at work has increased and the risk of personal injury outside of work has increased. Not to mention the risk to the members of the wider community with drowsy, accident prone drivers on our roads. A study by Spurgeon in 2003 also suggested 
that in addition to night work or long shifts, long work hours overall have a ne negative impact on the health and safety. She concluded working more than a 48 hour week significantly increased the chance of mental health problems. If she is alluding to stress or depression, then you can bet it's costing your company money. According to a Medibank private report in 2008, stress is costing the Australian, pri Australian economy in excess of $14.8 billion annually and leads to 3.2 lost working days per employee per year, directly affecting your bottom line. Spurgeon went on to conclude that an average work week of 60 hours or more significantly increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, which is Australia's biggest killer. With a third of Australian workers averaging a 60 hour week, this is a real concern. Clearly fatigue presents a significant health and safety issue. If ignored, it may be impacting on the productivity of your workforce, contributing to health costs and may be jeopardising your safety record. A review of your current policies may provide you with a significant return in cost savings and improve the bottom line in this current difficult economy. We hope that you've enjoyed this short video and that it's been insightful regarding the management of fatigue. If you know or suspect that fatigue is affecting the safety and productivity of people in your business, then you can contact me at fatigue at safetyhub.co.nz or through our contact page. While you're here, check out some of the other products and services that are available and can be tailored to help measure, manage and mitigate the fatigue in your business.